What is it about Stardew Valley that is so special? Is it the addicting gameplay mechanics that keep you hooked, always wanting to play just one more day? Is it the slow-paced story that gradually unfolds as you learn new things about the characters? Is it the beautiful music or the simple pixel art that somehow conveys big feelings and emotions? Maybe all of the above, or maybe something more. Today I'm here to explore the magic of Stardew Valley. My history with this game is unique. I was introduced to it thinking certainly I could never enjoy a game like this. Something about the pixel art really put me off. I couldn't see myself enjoying it. Which is hilarious now because I have so much sentimental attachment to the same pixel characters and animals that I once found off-putting. If there was ever a game I could say I was officially addicted to, it would be Stardew Valley. A game I lost sleep for and even cancelled my own birthday to play at the time. Not only was I hopelessly addicted to the gameplay, but also the role-playing aspects of the game are so much fun. If you've never played co-op Stardew Valley, I highly recommend it, especially if you're like me and there's an aspect of the game that you're not skilled at. For me, it's fishing, and to this day, I've never caught a fish in the game, but I was still able to complete the community center bundles because my husband was a skilled fisherman and enjoyed it. Everyone knows what role-playing looks like with the NPCs in the town, and that with time and effort, friendships blossom into relationships and eventually marriage. But people who haven't played the game co-op may not know that the same mechanics many people enjoy about the NPCs in the game can be experienced with another player. You can dance together at the flower dance, propose, get married, share a home, and have a baby together. All of this, in my opinion, makes it the perfect co-op game for a couple. Years later, I've played three farms all the way to end game and played the tropical DLC Ginger Island to completion, and I look back on the game so fondly, as it was a positive companion for me in a bad time of my life. I can never recapture the feelings that I had in the game during my first playthrough, but replaying it is still really enjoyable. Speaking of the replay value, I thought initially that playing the game a second time would be less fun because you already know all of the celebrations and events and you know all the crops and you feel like you have the NPCs figured out, but this couldn't be further from the truth. On your first playthrough, especially if you're going in blind and not relying heavily on wikis and walkthroughs, there's no chance you will finish the community center in your first year. However, on your second playthrough, you know so much more and it's so satisfying to get the community center finished as fast as possible. I think that this is true for many players too and that later in their playthroughs they find themselves enjoying and savoring parts of the game that they had never thought important in their first playthrough. A good example for me in this regard was the wizard. I always thought, forget that guy, he's rude. But later in other playthroughs I realized that befriending him can actually yield some pretty cool results. I know I'm not alone in playing this game multiple times, and this game is beloved by many for a variety of reasons. I'm Dearest Dimple. I make video essays about the media that I love, and if you subscribe, I can keep making more of them. I really want to be able to dedicate more of my time to making these videos because I love doing it, so please hit that button below. For anyone who may not know, Stardew Valley is a farming simulation game developed by Eric Baroni, also known as Concerned Ape, that was heavily inspired by Harvest Moon. I'll be referring to him as Concerned Ape for the remainder of the video. He said, Growing up playing Harvest Moon for the SNES and Harvest Moon Back to Nature for the PlayStation, those games really left a lasting impression on me. They just struck a chord with me in the deepest way possible. It's rare and wonderful when something can do that, and convinced me that games can truly have a transcendental power. So of course, I set out to make my own game and I wanted to capture that feeling of joy and wonder. And if you're watching this, I know you agree with me that he did indeed capture that feeling, and he gave it tenfold to 20 million plus players. Stardew Valley's story follows the player's character, who inherits a farm from their grandfather and moves to Pelican Town to start their new life. The game allows players to build their farms, grow crops, raise animals, mine for resources, and interact with other characters in the game's world. The game's open world design, 
pixel art style, and relaxing gameplay make it an enjoyable experience for players. The game's emphasis on relationships and social interactions make it stand out from other farming simulators, and the mechanics of relationships are different from other games focusing on a more deep relationship and learning more about the characters than you typically would in other games like Harvest Moon or Story of Seasons. Players appreciate Stardew Valley's immersive gameplay, charming aesthetics, and the ability to escape into a peaceful virtual world. The game's relaxing atmosphere and satisfying progression systems help some players unwind and de-stress. I don't really relate to this sentiment though. Even though I agree it has a peaceful atmosphere, I can get pretty worked up when playing Stardew. With the time mechanics and feeling the pressure and crunch to get as much done in such a small amount of time. The game was released in February of 2016 and it became an instant hit it far exceeded Concerned Ape's expectations. The project started for him as a way to build upon a game that he loved, Harvest Moon, and at the same time build his own skills for improving job prospects in the future. However, this pet project ballooned into a full-blown mega successful game, selling over 20 million copies across all platforms as of March of 2022. To understand the concepts I will discuss later in the video, I think it's important to understand the creator of this game and his creative process. Concerned Ape developed Stardew Valley as a tribute to his favorite classic childhood game that he always felt like could be a little better, so he took it upon himself to do just that. The game's development took over four years, during which Concerned Ape worked completely alone on coding the game's mechanics, dialogue, story, pixel art, and music a feat that is majorly unheard of in today's industry of multi-million dollar game studios. Even games you may think of as small indie titles like Cozy Grove are developed by studios with dozens of developers working on them at once. Concerned Ape had considered himself an introvert his entire life, but the process of developing Stardew Valley proved to be all-consuming and he ended up more isolated than ever. He did have a partner who has stuck with him through it all. He and his partner have said that it was difficult due to Ape's hyper-focus on the game during this time and it was challenging for their relationship as it consumed every second of free time that he had. This quote from Concerned Ape illustrates the level of dedication that he had to this project. I put in thousands of hours on pixel art just to get better at it. I just persevered and forced myself to learn. You realize the thing that you thought was good actually isn't. You realize why and improve on it. And it's just an endless cycle. From reading many interviews with Concerned Ape, it seems that he's a perfectionist, which clearly paid off with Stardew Valley as there are so many small details that I appreciate in the game that I know could be easily overlooked. I know this in part due to the fact that there are areas I played through many times before ever noticing easter eggs or secrets. I've learned many secrets from YouTube videos that I wonder, how did they ever discover that? That wasn't in a secret note. Concerned Ape's ability to come at the game from the perspective of being a gamer himself, he realized how valuable those small details are and he understood how much personality and charm it adds to the game by not skipping out on those small details. Later on, after the game's initial release, Concerned Ape partnered with a publishing company, Chucklefish. And when many people advocated to get a co-op mode in the game, he let someone else take the reins for the first time, allowing them to implement the co-op mode, saying in an interview that he regretted promising co-op and it seemed like it would be really unpleasant to code it into the game. So he allowed this to be done by someone else. Now let's talk about some of the things that are truly special about Stardew Valley. Stardew Valley is skillful at building curiosity. There are many areas that you see early on in the game that you have no idea about, but you know they must lead somewhere or do something, and that piques your curiosity and makes you eager to find out where they lead or how to uncover the secrets. Areas like the sewer, the broken bridges, the bus stop, the mine carts, and the entrance to the secret forest that's blocked by large stumps just sit there staring at you until you unlock them. Then, once you do finally get access to those areas, it's so satisfying. There are also many other mysteries to unlock in the game that I never would have even known how to if it hadn't been for wikis and YouTube walkthroughs. Things like the movie theater, the secret statues, 
the menu Easter eggs, how to appease the cat creature in the woods, how to put a hat on your horse, how to get a galaxy sword, or the giant Junimo plush. I will say the one that I did figure out for myself was what to feed the ancient statue in the secret forest, and it felt so good to figure it out on my own. I think one of the reasons that he included so many little secrets like these was to increase the feelings of surprise and curiosity that make you want to play the game over and over. The feelings of curiosity are taken to a completely new level on Ginger Island. Mysteries abound and puzzles galore in this DLC. It was so fun to explore and unlock the secrets, finding all of the golden coconuts, unraveling the enigma of Leo, Mr. Key, Birdie, and Professor Snail. The significant increase in puzzles and mysteries in the DLC makes me wonder if Concerned Ape will put even more of these in the new game he's working on, The Haunted Chocolatier. Solving puzzles is so satisfying and it adds to the positive reinforcement in the gameplay. Something about a mysterious tropical island is just interesting to me. Earlier in the video, I mentioned that while many find Stardew Valley relaxing and a laid back game to unwind with, I kind of disagree and this is why. The pressure I always feel to make the absolute most of each in-game day keeps me from ever feeling very relaxed with this game. I still enjoy it very much, but I don't classify this game as chill or cozy in my mind. I feel like I'm managing a business when I'm playing Stardew and I have to run a tight ship for literally no reason though. The stakes for not making the most of your days are relatively innocuous, but they still feel big to me. Another thing that is unique to Stardew Valley is the highly addictive game loop. One day is 6 a.m. to 2 a.m., making it a 20-hour in-game day cycle that amounts to 17 real-life minutes. You wake up at 6 a.m. to the rooster's crow, and every night you're supposed to go to bed before 2 a.m. If you fail to make it in time, your character will pass out, and the next day you will be penalized by starting the day with less energy, which is the lifeblood of all gameplay. You need energy to do anything productive in Stardew Valley, with the exception of socializing. I've seen other players that feel pretty casually about the bedtime crunch, and at the end of the day, they just allow themselves to pass out wherever they may be, but I am not this way at all. I feel very strongly that I have to make it to bed before 2 a.m. no no matter what. Sure, if I've lost track of time in the mines and I'm stuck on level 80, okay, I'm just gonna have to let Linus drag my unconscious self back to bed, but if I'm on my farm or anywhere in town, I am running as fast as my legs will take me to my bed. I have played many other games with similar daytime mechanics. A few immediately that come to mind are Harvest Moon, Story of Seasons, and more recently, Ooblets, where the in-game day is much shorter than a real-life day in comparison to a real-time clock game like Animal Crossing, where the day in-game and out-of-game is the same length. Although many of these games have roughly the same length of day as Stardew Valley, they feel much different, and I think I know why. It's the passing out at 2 a.m. The consequences for passing out at 2 a.m. are not even severe, but still, it adds just enough pressure to make a difference to give you that hit of dopamine when you make it to bed in time. You inevitably feel like, I can just play one more day. In other games like Story of Seasons, you can just stay up all night. Sure, you're going to be sick and have less energy, but there isn't a definite hard off where you just pass out at a certain time. The days in game also seem to be the perfect length where you always feel like you can play just one more, leading to me procrastinating real life responsibilities or sleeping many times. When studying interviews with Concerned Ape, I got the impression that he played around quite a bit with the length of days before settling on 17 minutes that we have now. Just out of curiosity, I started looking into other addictive games and I found out something interesting. Some of the top most addictive games according to research are Fortnite, PUBG, and League of Legends. And wouldn't you know it, they all have rounds that are similar in length to one day in Stardew Valley. This seems to be the perfect amount of delayed gratification for a dopamine release for completing one round or one day successfully. 
In the other games that I mentioned, rounds last for an indeterminate amount of time depending on how quickly players eliminate one another, but they're all around 20 to 30 minutes. What is dopamine? Dopamine is a chemical that's released in the brain to make you feel good. Having the right amount of dopamine is important for both your body and your brain. Dopamine is most notably involved in helping us feel pleasure as part of the brain's reward system. The release of dopamine can be linked with many things that feel addicting like eating delicious foods, shopping, and gaming. Dopamine is a powerful neurotransmitter in the brain and it helps sustain people's interest and attention, which is why it can be hard for people to tear themselves away from a situation or behavior that's causing a dopamine release. It's also self-reinforcing. The more times that people experience the behavior, the more dopamine is released and the more driven they are to return to this behavior. If a person experiences dopamine release while they're playing video games, the brain associates that activity with dopamine and the person develops a strong drive to seek out that same pleasure again and again. This might sound negative, but dopamine release can also be experienced when doing anything pleasurable, including exercise, reading a good book, socializing with friends, or laughing at something funny. So when games have rewards too often, the brain will not release as much dopamine as it would have if there was a slight delay in gratification. This rush of pleasure that you feel during a dopamine release is why gamers will continue playing a game that they are clearly not enjoying or even raging out at. They're chasing that good feeling that they had before when they were winning. But on the opposite end of things, if the days in Stardew Valley were too long, it might lead to boredom in between. I think Concerned Ape found the exact perfect amount of time for in-game days when he landed on 17 minutes. There are many reasons why completing one day in Stardew Valley feels good. There's the feeling of, I made it when getting to bed on time. And there's also the good feeling that comes with seeing the total of all the money you made that day rolling in on the day completion screen. You may have been placing forageables, crops, and animal products in your shipping bin all day. Or if you're like my husband, fish and resources from the mines, but you don't really have a concrete idea of how much money you've made from them until the day completion screen where it all tallies up in such a satisfying way. The pressure to get as much done as possible in a day makes the time go by really quickly in the real world, and that's another reason why it always feels like you have time for just one more day, because they feel so incredibly short, unless you're in the middle of winter year one. Then it gets a little more difficult to find things to fill your days. Time to make some friends and kill some slimes. For me, my days are filled with farming, both planting, watering, harvesting, and selling crops, and petting, feeding, and harvesting resources from my livestock. With the animals, the game puts pretty reasonable restrictions on how many animals you can have in the early stages of a playthrough, because the amount is limited by the barns and coops that you have, and those are difficult to get more of because they cost many resources and gold, and they also take time to build. So in the beginning, it's easy to manage your resources. Crops, however, are a completely different story. It is really easy to get in over your head and I never learn my lesson. Every playthrough at the end of the season, I end up with enough crops planted that just watering them takes me all day. Between these two things, my in-game days are pretty full and it makes them go by even quicker. Although this is how I spend my days when I'm playing Stardew Valley, I know that other people get more satisfaction out of the other activities in the game and could easily spend their entire days fishing or fighting in the mines. Something so unique about this game is the wide variety of play and activities to do. If you're feeling burnt out or bored with one, there are many other choices. Stardew Valley perfectly scratched the ADHD itch. Not only are there a variety of options for play, but you feel as if you're constantly multitasking, keeping things interesting. There is a dopamine release that comes with completing a day in game and reaching a new landmark in the mines. The perfect thing that scratches the itch is the game adds a level of urgency to everything you do. 
People with ADHD struggle often with motivation leading to procrastination. One of the reasons they procrastinate is the sense of urgency they feel when reaching a deadline provides motivation, and they're able to hyper-focus on the task when they feel it's urgent. So the time crunch to get as much done as possible in each day and then get to bed in time in Stardew Valley gives that feeling. The main activities in the game are fishing, mining, farming, building friendships, fighting, and foraging. And if you're terrible at any of those skills, you can go an entire playthrough without certain mechanics, except for when you absolutely need them for the community center. Or if you're lucky, you can find a friend to play co-op with and they can assist you with the skills that aren't your forte. Later in my playthroughs, when I get my farming more automated with auto petters, grabbers, sprinklers, and junimo huts, I like to spend more time on other activities, especially foraging, artisan goods, and socializing, building up my relationships with the other inhabitants of Stardew Valley. When you have ADHD, you're more susceptible to feelings of boredom, and this game does such a good job at preventing that from happening. Getting to know the other people in Stardew Valley is more difficult than other games with simpler friendship mechanics, and here's a few reasons why. Later in Harvest Moon-esque games, like Story of Seasons, you're able to date many characters all at once. Take them all to the max hearts until you choose the one that you want to marry. And then once you marry one of your suitors, all of those other friendships that turned romantic go to being completely empty and soulless. This mechanic makes the relationships feel so fake, like all of the time and effort that you poured into these characters is not rewarded in any sort of meaningful way if you don't choose to marry them. This is not the case with Stardew Valley. In Stardew, the way that the characters slowly open up to you and reveal their desires for their lives feels so deep and meaningful, rather than just simply learning what food they like. But that's important too. For some reason, even though many characters in this game have families, friends, even little groups that they hang out in, like Shane has Marnie and Jazz, and Sam has his band with Sebastian and Abigail, even though they have these little friend groups, for some reason, every single NPC character character in Stardew Valley feels all alone. They feel lonely and it feels like you're the only one that can understand them and bring them true happiness. I don't know if it's the way that they slowly open up to you or maybe it's the shallowness that comes from the relationships they have with others, even though Shane should be eternally grateful for Marnie and he should want to work hard for the family, that doesn't help with his depression and his turning to alcohol even though he loves Jazz and wants to do anything for her. He still can't pull himself up out of the hole, not until you show up and he's able to discover true friendship and come to his own real conclusions about what he wants his life to be. With Sebastian, he feels a very relatable feeling that I used to have all of the time. Even though he's in a group of people that he plays D&D and plays music with, he still dreams of something different. He wants to move away to the big city and start his life completely over. Even though he has a family that loves him and friends that care for him, it just doesn't seem to be enough once again, until you come along. I can't help but wonder if Concerned Ape, when making this game, wanted to translate his own feelings of isolation and loneliness in these characters. Despite having a loyal, loving partner during the development of this game, his self-imposed isolation and seclusion had to produce some amount of loneliness. Loneliness is an epidemic in America, and many people can relate strongly to this feeling. A report from October of 2020 suggested that 36% of all Americans feel serious loneliness. Not surprisingly, loneliness appears to have increased substantially since the outbreak of the pandemic. Loneliness takes a serious toll on the body and mind. Studies have shown that feelings of serious loneliness can lead to increased risks of stress, anxiety, depression, sleep problems, and other health complications. Recent studies found that social isolation significantly increased a person's risk of premature death from all causes, a risk that may rival those of smoking, obesity, and physical inactivity. Stardew also emphasizes the importance of one conversation or one small act of kindness, and how giving a small gift or taking time out of your day to notice someone can make such a big difference in their life. Take the time to reach out to someone you haven't heard from in a while. 
It might just make their day. This can be applied to real life, and it's important for us to remember that the smallest acts of kindness can be seen as enormous in someone else's eyes. This concept makes even more sense to me when I view it through the eyes of an introvert like Concerned Ape. Studies have shown that introverts actually value social interaction just as much as extroverts do, but they can receive as much value from an interaction as small as 40 seconds. Knowing all of this, and then also knowing that Concerned Ape was not interested in coding the co-op and implementing it into the game himself makes so much sense to me, as I'm sure he values the relationships that the player forms with the NPCs much more than playing the game with friends because that's how he originally intended it. But as an extrovert, I'm so happy that he let it happen because to me, it's one of the most valuable aspects of the game because of the way I played it initially. Playing alongside someone you care about, working as a team to fulfill the community center bundles is so fun. Not to mention that doing the events together, especially the egg hunt and fighting in the mines or the skull cavern together. If not for my husband fending off the monsters while I was desperately eating cheese for health, I never would have made it to level 100 of the mines. Sharing the satisfaction of building the farm together is also so much better than sharing it with an NPC who didn't help you build it from scratch. The overall message behind this game is about following your true happiness and inner peace and satisfaction that can come with following your own dreams and working for yourself. Many of us can relate to that sentiment. If we worked as hard for ourselves as we do for our bosses and jobs, we would be in such a better place in life. We see in the beginning of the game our character is working for a soulless corporation and we're slaving away all day in front of a computer, leading to ultimately being dissatisfied with our lives. When asked about the Joja Corporation in an interview, Concerned Ape said, Corporations are some of the biggest players in the global arena. They wield extraordinary power over governments, communities, and individuals. The Joja Corporation represents that power taken to a frightening extreme. It's a bit of a caricature, but also disturbingly realistic. I wanted the game to have some real world messages, something for a modern audiences to relate to. Stardew is mostly just a fun game, but maybe also a plea for individuals and communities to empower themselves. Also in the beginning of the game, we are given a letter from our grandfather that reads, Dear grandson, if you're reading this, you must be in dire need of a change. The same thing happened to me long ago. I'd lost sight of what mattered most in life, real connections with other people and nature. So I dropped everything and moved to a place where I truly belong. I've enclosed the deed to that place, my pride and joy. It's located in Stardew Valley on the Southern coast. It's the perfect place to start your new life. This was my most precious gift of all, and now it's yours. I know you'll honor the family home, my boy. Good luck. Love, Grandpa. Through this letter, it seems that Grandpa has revealed the true meaning of life is real connections with other people and nature. We could all take a page from Grandpa's book here. In many capitalist countries, employees have a tendency to overwork. Overwork leads to many negative things. A study showed that 49% of respondents cited increased stress, while 42% cited emotional fatigue, and about 40% cited physical fatigue. Several complained of lack of sleep as a consequence of overworking. Overall, about 77% of respondents said working overtime negatively affected their work-life balance. Knowing this, you would think that employers would be quick to address the problems of overwork when they're brought to their attention. However, the same study found that less than half of employers took any action. It's so important to remember that we need to live for ourselves. And one of the small silver linings of the pandemic seems to be that people of the younger generations are beginning to realize that work-life balance is important. When faced with the two options in game, it's a no-brainer to help the mayor and Pierre rather than the Joja Corporation. We need to remember to make the same decisions in our everyday lives. Connections with friends and memories we make in this life are so much more important than work. 
A nurse who worked her entire career caring for the dying said in her memoir that the top five regrets that patients had were as follows. I wish I'd had the courage to live a true life for myself, not the life others expected of me. I wish I didn't work so hard. I wish I'd had the courage to express my feelings. I wish I had stayed in touch with my friends. I wish I had let myself be happier. I'm sure coming from a life of work prior to finding his passion in creating Stardew Valley, Concerned Ape intended for others to be inspired to follow their dreams and passions in life. Something else that's so unique about Stardew Valley has been the rich and active community of modders, and they have been sanctioned by the creator of the game. He has said that he enjoys the modding that people have done, praising mods on Twitter, and even updating the game to make modding easier and allow mods to go deeper into the game. He has said, I think Stardew Valley's community is one of the finest in the entire video game world. It's really great how welcoming and positive the community is, and they breathe so much life into the game. Stardew wouldn't be where it is without the energy of the community. Some of the mods include simple things like more clothing, more scenery, but others go much further, adding entirely new characters to the game. Concerned Ape has a unique perspective on what the game has become since its release, saying, I feel less connected than I did before the release, because the game has kind of left the nest and taken on a character of its own that's more than just me. It's also the interpretations from all the other people who have played it. I would imagine it's like if you have a kid and they leave the house and they start a life of their own. You still feel this parental connection, but it's a different sort of feeling. Looking forward. Concerned Ape is now working on a new game, The Haunted Chocolatier. We now have a trailer for it but still don't know much about it. Based on what he has divulged in interviews, it's obvious this project will be more ambitious than Stardew Valley, and he's excited to build his own world that's not confined to the inspiration of Harvest Moon like Stardew Valley was. He's planning to develop this new game completely on his own again, just like he did before, and he says he wants to challenge the expectations of what people think can be done by one developer. Concerned Ape developing games completely on his own gives them such a unique voice, and it's refreshing to see someone trust their creative process enough to not need input from many sources. There are so many valuable lessons that can be learned from this wonderful game, and I'm forever grateful for when it came into my life and the joy that it brought me. Well, there you have it. All of the things that I love about Stardew Valley and what makes it truly magical. This game is like lightning in a bottle. I don't think that anybody could ever recapture the feeling that comes with this game. If you made it this far in the video, I really appreciate your time and I hope you do something today that makes you happy. See you later. Bye! Oh, and please subscribe. Please. Thanks.